Cunningham, it's more pertinent now than ever. It's more important now than ever this would be going, going further and what's begun to propose. So you might uh, want to mull over that um, as I you now read the article to you uh, in terms of uh, uh, that, the framing of it and how you might react to that and how you might think about it. Uh, it's, it captures that point in my own organization of grasping the, this challenge, okay, in the kind of way I've framed it to you. Uh, uh, of course, this is like 1988, so picture, uh, there's a lot to come after that. If we picture an arc of development, for example, that might start uh, from my, for example, introduction to Don Clark, who I've not mentioned tonight, the first self-declared gay psychologist, the first met in 1971, 72. Uh, and I first sort of impacted in that kind of way to combine being psychologically minded and gay through his, his example, uh, all the way to the founding of the Institute for Contemporary Brain Psychoanalysis in 2005. That might be the arc of development uh, that's referenced uh, both in act, terms of action and in terms of thinking, uh, of which the article I'm going to read tonight is a uh, kind of midpoint item, so to speak, a, a bit of a snapshot of that time and place. Uh, so, um, let's see how that do. Oh, well, I babbled on a little while, on my apologies. Now, I want to encourage you to also try and stay in tune with how you feel in your uh, mind and body as I go through this. Uh, and I want to invite you to be as open as possible to your experience of, on this level, because uh, it's not a very long piece, and I would like uh, to perhaps open uh, up to you guys to have some give and take about this matter. Uh, any questions you might have, any reactions you might have, uh, anything uh, uh, that you'd like to hear more about or that you might like me to contextualize further, to contextualize vis-a-vis -vis, um, uh, the current uh, Jungian scene or the current scene uh, here in uh, Southern California vis-a-vis -vis what the kinds of thoughts are there like this, not much <laughs> to begin with, but it, whatever you might be interested in, if anything, excuse me. This is the second of three Jungian papers. The third is on father son incest, which has been twice rejected, twice offered to the journal Analytic Psychology, the premier uh, journal in this field, which is twice rejected it because I offered it a generation after I wrote it. Uh, and of course, it's written this written a year after the article I'm going to read you. And so, but it's, the reason I started writing it, another whole explanation of that. Uh, I felt it needed to cook, it was too dirty. Uh, the topic, though, I could have rushed it into print. Uh, sometimes Jungians don't feel, people who are working in a Jungian modality are not interested in being as quick as possible with things. That's actually often a mistake. And I felt that what I was writing about uh, in terms of, of the homosexual symbolism of, of symbolic father-son incest for folks who eventually became gay and fight men uh, was so loaded that I didn't dare, I probably didn't dare offer it for publication, though I bet you if I would have done fresh, it would have been accepted at the time. Uh, uh, though I didn't do that, so when I did come around to it, it was a whole different generation, as I told you. Uh, and so right away, I didn't change the piece. <laughs> each time it was rejected for postmodernist concerns, though each time, interestingly, and framed in a somewhat different way. <laughs> Fluidity is fluid. <laughs> it keeps itself changing, isn't it? <laughs> Jungians too become rather fluid in some ways. <laughs> He's a, to somewhat except the JAP has, though it's fortunately not altogether has uh, the uh, literature been taken over by postmodernist thought. Thank heavens. Uh, because, uh, uh, in my opinion, postmodernism does not have anything serious to offer in general. And I'm happy to debate those of you who might have a position about that. Uh, but it has been very challenging, on the other hand, for which I applaud. I applaud all challenges. I've been a great disruptor in my own life and intellectually myself. I always applaud uh, uh, any challenge to comfortableness. <coughs> I'll also appreciate there are always two sides <laughs> to any issue. <coughs> So I'm going to read this old clunker now to you, okay, uh, and uh, I'm going to make, I don't want to rush through it, uh, but uh, uh, I'm going to make uh, every once in a while a little note about something here uh, for your information. Uh, 
Uh, if it gets too rough or something, you feel free to scream or whatever. <laughs> I'm not anticipating like that. Uh, keep in mind, this is written for the Jungian folks, so <laughs> it's, it is, but oddly enough, it might not seem like if you don't know what technical means, it wouldn't register, but, but sometimes the phrasings are odd because they're technical, but sometimes they're odd because the fuckers, you know, the editors screw it up, they're done, they do their number. And so it loses a certain, some things are clunky in a certain way. They, crunch things together, mold, mold, move it around, it's like, ugh. <clears throat> but it wasn't so horrifying, I just said, my god, I can't stand it. They, were, they had to ask my okay form, right, so they could go into outrageous. <laughs> but nonetheless, <laughs> they do their little thing, and uh, uh, the larger ones I'll mention. So starting with the title, okay. So I can't help it, even though the title that they gave is going to homophobia, it's, it's oddly, um, glancingly fitting, I suppose you could say, but that's the best one could say about it. Its real title is A New Theory of Male Homosexuality, Individuation as Gay. Now, as I mentioned to you before, uh, um, homosexuals, the word most commonly used um, uh, to describe folks like uh, gay and white folks, would be called today. Um, uh, wasn't much considered to begin with. So I began my discussion with you in the field as it stood at that time. So to keep in mind, this was this is what it looked like at that time. Homosexuality is a subject that has received remarkably little attention by Jungian psychology, as a Andrew, that's Andrew Samuels, another in seminal review of the field. That's Jungian, post Jungian, that's a whole book now. Which was very current at the time. Although C. G. Jung had little to say about it, certain remarks of his have shaped the subsequent treatment of this topic by analytical psychologists. Robert Hockey's exhaustive review of Jung's writings on homosexuality shows that Jung held five distinct attitudes toward homosexuality and that he advanced three different theories of etiology. He believed that, quote, homosexuality is a result of psychological immaturity and consequently is abnormal and disturbed, unquote. Jung also held the theory that male homosexuality is the result of an infantile relationship to the feminine, variously termed a, quote, mother complex, quote, anima identification, and, quote, unconscious matriarchal psychology. Until recently, this theory has dominated most Jungian discussions about homosexuality, while Jung's other views about homosexuals have been given little consideration. Only in the past few years have some analytic writers begun to question this arrangement. Picture an intellectual time when um, gay men is just beginning, and so there's a few writers who begin to respond to this. This is again before all that was snuffed out by postmodernism. All that was snuffed out by postmodernism. No writer or gay affirmative view survived. It was all snuffed out. Myself as an example of it, but all this kind of literature. What I'm reading to you is one of the la first and last pieces of this literature ever to be published. It was all snuffed out by the rise of postmodernism in combination with traditional homophobia, believe it or not. It's a terrible story uh, of the history of it, but at the time I'm writing, it was encouraging. That's why I'm saying that. Only in the past few years have some analytic rise, because this was like this new spring was beginning to open, which is why I was then also able to get this article uh, submitted, and they accepted it. It's part of that same atmosphere at the time, you see. So it's good to kind of grasp that this would be what's going on when the article does that. <clears throat> Only in the past few years have some analytic writers begun to question this arrangement. I mean, the old arrangement where you don't talk about homosexuals, really. Monique, for example, in an analysis of the homosexual immaturity and femininity positions of analytic psychology, concludes they are at heart, quote, naturalistic fallacies, unquote. He asks, quote, is one man more in tow of the great mother because he avoids her earthly counterpart, while another is less so because he cannot live without her? He's talking about between gays and straights, right? <laughs> Gay and straight men. Is one man frozen in the great mother's embrace because he is not drawn to her breast, while another is free of her chains because he is? <laughs> so he's pointing out the contradictions in Jungian thought on the anima. He's a very clever uh, way he's doing it. Unquote. 
Monique is critical of analytical psychology's approach to homosexuality. Quote, the effort to dictate who a man should love is perverted theology, even in psychology. It can become theology. It is the psychological counterpart of monotheism, dominated by patriarchal triumphalism, demanding adherence to the patriarch's one true God, unquote. Hopke is equally harsh in his summary, quote, Jung's view of homosexuality as psychologically, in quote, immature or, in quote, infantile, is based on a rigid sexual teleology, meaning final purpose, and genital heterosexual practice in the telos, meaning where it's going to arrive, arrive it's going to have to inevitably be heterosexual. Such a view is neither accurate empirically in light of subsequent research, nor, for that reason, is it particularly useful in gaining a better understanding of homosexual men and women, unquote. It sounds sane now, but at the time you had to argue these things. I mean, it sounds sane except for deconstruction. In contrast to the traditional interpretation of homosexuality as immature and abnormal, Hopke argues that another of Jung's views would more fruitfully, quote, provide a fertile place to examine the lives of gay people and our own inner homosexuality in whatever form, unquote. Namely, Jung's view that, quote, an individual's homosexuality has its own meaning peculiar to the individual in question, and that psychological growth consists of becoming conscious of that meaning, unquote. To stress this view is to shift analytic consideration of homosexuality from concepts of pathology and regression to those of the teleological meaning of homosexuality, especially in terms of Jung's concept of individuation. Teleological, by the way, if you, if you don't know, Jung is more concerned with the psyche as, as the psyche is concerned with its future, not merely its past or its present. That's what he means when I use the word, when I bring in the word teleology. It's referencing a whole aspect of Jung's philosophy of the mind or the psyche that a big part, he would say the biggest part, though not all, of the concern of the psyche is not with the past or even the present. Even though we only are in the present, everything only is in the present, except in the psyche, all times and realities are there at the same time. What we would call the same time, including the future. And not only including, you would say most importantly, the future. How can that be is a whole great phenomenological understanding of that. Old school of understanding. Not some clicky number to get it. I'll just let you know here as I go over the literature what has been referenced here. Excuse me. Because <laughs> these things sound uh, so otherwise innocuous, you know. <laughs> <laughs> to stress this view is to shift analytic consideration of how, I'll repeat that sentence. To stress this view is to shift analytic consideration of homosexuality from concepts of pathology and regression to those of the teleological meaning of homosexuality especially in terms of Jung's concept of individuation. From this latter view, a homosexual could be required, quote, to face the challenge of understanding what meaning his or her own homosexuality could have, unquote. And that question of uh, the challenge of understanding what meaning is, again, another way of saying the challenge of individuation. Individuation is not something that happens. It's a challenge to become more so than what one was inside of oneself. This shift in analytic thinking on homosexuality parallels recent changes in psychoanalytic thought. So you're on psych in formal terms, uh, an analysis is not thought of as psychoanalysis. Changes in psychoanalytic thought from considerations that, so Jungian thought is technically called analytical or analytic, okay? So you understand that. It's not psychoanalytic, it's separate, that's Jungian. Analytic means Jungian. Psychoanalytic means Freudian, okay? From considerations of drive theory to concepts of ego and self and expresses a cultural transition toward acknowledging gayness as a valid way of being. 